insulation foam. You can get this from most DIY shops. One sheet will last you quite a long time. Wooden craft sticks, wooden barbecue skewers, and tissue paper. First, we'll get our cardboard tube and a little guy of the right scale, in this case, an Empire Soldier from Warhammer Fantasy. Hold him up in front of the tube and draw around him to get the rough scale of the door. Once that's done, we'll draw in the door with a ruler. Simple. Next, we'll take our pink builder's foam and, using a very sharp knife, cut some slivers from it. Be aware that this stuff will blunt your knife in no time flat, so unless you want the cook of your household to find a more painful use for it, don't use a good kitchen knife. Get a utility knife from a DIY shop instead, they're not too expensive, I got this one for 10 euro. Cut the slivers into rods, but don't worry about being too consistent with the size. Try to make sure that they all have a square cross section, and then cut those rods into bricks. With the bricks all cut out, take any container, in my case a pot that had chewing gum in it, and put some stones you pinched from your local park inside. Now, load up your bricks, don't put too many in at once, make sure they have room to move around, and then give the thing a really good shake. Once you've had enough of shaking, empty the bricks out of your pot. What were regular looking foam cuboids have transformed into stone textured bricks. With your bricks ready, get your tube and some PVA glue. This massive pot I have calls it wood glue, or Holzleim in German, but it's essentially the same as school glue. Get some in a container, take your lollipop stick and spread it on your cardboard a bit at a time. Then stick your stone bricks on in such a way that each brick is approximately in the centre of the two bricks below. This pattern of brick laying is called a running pond, by the way. There's no need to be too neat here, some wonky brick laying is allowed. Our structure is built cheaply by medieval farmers after all, not master masons. It's a windmill, not a cathedral. quite some time, you should have something that looks like this. Next, measure some of the lollipop sticks and cut them down to size. These will be the posts for our wattle and daub section. Again, neatness is not the aim of the game here.
Once you've cut enough, stick them onto the cardboard tube in a roughly equal spacing. On to the next part. By mixing baking powder, here in Austria it's called Natron, and more PVA glue, we create a textured paste that looks a bit like the lumpy Artex plaster you used to see on those horrible ceilings everywhere. Spread this relatively liberally onto the panels between the posts. Rough texture is good here, so if you can make it lumpy and bumpy, that's a good thing, and now's the time to do it. Once your texture paste is on and fully dried, get some PVA glue, thin it down with lots of water, and slap it all over your model. Once it's dry, do it again. What this does is effectively form a protective plastic layer all over. This is essential for sealing the foam in order to protect it from damage and so that it will take paint properly later. With that done, take a cutting compass and cut a circle that's a, quite a bit larger than the diameter of your tube. The larger you make the circle, the taller and pointier your roof can be, so bear that in mind.
Then cut out a wedge from the circle. The smaller your wedge, the shallower the angle of your roof. Then glue it together in a cone shape and stick onto the tube. Now for the tiles. Measure points one centimeter apart in a line on a piece of cardstock. Do the same thing again and link the points together with straight lines. Cut these strips out with your knife. Now that we've got the strips prepared, we just need to cut them with scissors into squares, rectangles, etc. There's no need to be too neat here. Roofers in the Middle Ages were almost as bad as roofers today. Once that's done, go back to our PVA glue, slop it on the roof and lay your tiles in layers, starting from the bottom and working towards the top. Get comfortable, cue up a podcast maybe, because this is both very fiddly and quite boring, honestly. Once we're almost all the way to the top, cut out a smaller circle with your compass. And make a little cone to cap the top. Cute. Now back to the windmill, finally. Measure the place where you'd like your windmill apparatus to connect to your tower and mark it with a pencil. Then use a pin vise to drill a hole at that point. Be careful when you do this because it's still cardboard at the end of the day. If you lean too heavily on the structure, you will crush it. Next, we'll make the spokes and the sails. Get some of your lollipop sticks and glue them together in a cross shape. There are probably neater ways to do this, but I just stack them all on top of each other. Then, measure a barbecue skewer to see how wide your sails are going to be. I went with 3cm for each stick. 
snip each skew into various 3cm chunks. I wasn't super neat with this either, but I'll sort that out later. Measure your spoke into equal segments. My spoke is 9cm long, so I went with 6 1.5cm segments. And glue a stick on each line. Then get another 9cm long skewer section and glue that to the sticks. Once you've done that all around, it should look something like this. Take four more sections of the same length and glue them halfway between the spoke and the outer stick so you have a kind of grid pattern. Not bad, looks like a windmill already. Take the drill and drill a hole in the centre of the spoke configuration so we can attach it to the central post. I cheated a little by using the tapered end of the stick to attach it to the hole. I also put a little segment of stick on the front so it looks as though the central post is poking all the way through, even though it's not. Sneaky. Then put the apparatus on the windmill. Looking pretty good. Don't glue it in yet because we're going to paint it separately. Time to make a door. Simply using the lollipop sticks, cut them up into rough beams and glue them onto a horizontal beam.
stick the resulting door into the hole. Where I'm from, put wood in hole is a dialect way of saying close the door. Next, we'll make some canvas sails for our windmill. Using Art Podge, which is Mod Podge really, and every school child's favourite art technique, papier mache. Get some tissue paper and cut it into a long rectangular shape. Dunk the strip in your Art Podge, which is thin PVA glue with a bit of varnish, until it's really well soaked. Then drape the resulting canvas onto the mechanism of your windmill. Then spend some time peeling the PVA glue mess off your fingers. Yuck. As an afterthought, we'll add a little frame around the hole in the plaster using barbecue skewer offcuts. It's extremely rough, but I don't mind. assembly goes into the hole to check the fit and that's pretty much it for the assembly portion of this project. Thanks for watching, come back next time when we'll paint our monolithic milling machine.